Gabrielle read the Quran to Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, in seven different ways. And the prophet, peace be upon him, wished the Quran would be understood in various times by all of the Arab tribes. And if he read the Quran seven different ways, that's telling you there's more than one way to skin a cat. And our Islamic scholars have failed us. And I'm telling the truth. OK, they don't understand the Quran like they think they do. They don't understand the Hadiths like they think they do because they don't understand the Bible. And the Bible came before the Quran. And we are supposed to pay attention to the scriptures. This is what the prophet Isa did. He paid attention to the prophecies as well as all the other prophets. And the Muslims have been found guilty of not studying the Bible. Now, I want to talk briefly about Bilal, Abin Rabbah. He was the voice of certainty. Bilal, Abin Rabbah. This man has three B's in his name. This man has a rab in his name. This man has Abba, that means father, in his name. Now, Bilal is a picture of al Mahdi. He's a picture of the father. He's a picture of the God of the Bible. And there's so many ways I can prove this to you. First of all, let's deal with Song of Solomon, chapter 1, 5 and 6. It reads, I am black but comely, O you daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me because I'm black, because the sun have looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. Now, this is in chapter one. The owner of the Islamic vineyard is a black man. In chapter five, it mentions a white reddish Mohammed. It mentions the shape of his eyes, the color of his hair, the color of his skin. Then it goes on to mention his name in verse 16. So there's no way of getting around that before the Arabian Mohammed, there was a black Mohammed and Bilal is a picture of him. Emancipated Bilal instantly became one of the closest and most trusted and distinguished companions of Prophet Muhammad. After the migration to Medina and when the institution of Adan, that is the prayer call, was founded, it was Bilal who was given the honor to be the first Muslim, the first caller to prayer. Now, this is a picture of al Mahdi, the father. Before there ever was a world, there was one man who was worshiping Allah with no partners. The religion of Islam came from al Mahdi. Now, let's think about al Mahdi. The Bible talks about a stone in which the builders rejected. Jesus, with his own mouth, said the stone that the builders rejected, that same stone has become the chief cornerstone. Now, on the corner of the Kaaba, there is a black stone surrounded by silver. This is a picture of me. I am the Lamonte, that means mountain. My dad, his name is Monty, which means mountain. And I am surrounded by the Veras right now. I'm surrounded by the virgins right here in my house, okay? I am the Bilal. Now, Bilal was rejected. He was tortured. They was try. his master was trying to make him give up Islam. He was trying to make him deny the religion of Islam. This man 
dealt with jealousy. He dealt with hatred. This man was on top of the Kaaba praying. Now think about it. This black man was on top of the Kaaba while everybody else was on the ground and he was praying. This is a picture of al Mahdi before there ever was a world praying to Allah with no partners. This man is a picture of that white stone that came down from heaven and became black because of the sins of the people. Now, if you heard my testimony, many of you probably haven't. But when I came to earth, I stepped in my mother's womb. I remember the hospital room and I remember pieces of the conversation my mama had with my doctor. It was a little personal, but I still remember it. I came down here. I came down. I descended. I was a descendant. Okay, not just the descendant of David, but I descended. I came down here. Okay, now this man was rejected. Speaking of Bilal, many people did not like him. And Bilal was known to be the man that had the paladates. Now, this is for people who study. For this, you have to be studied up to understand what I'm bringing out. Bilal was the man with the paladates. And I told you the death of al Mahdi will be 2034. I have it tattooed on my arm. September the 16th. Okay. This is going to happen 2034. The death of al Mahdi. Okay. I'm the man with the dates. I have Arab army. If you look at the barcode, you can spell Arab with bar. Then I have Maria on my arm. You can spell my army, a army. Where is my Arab army? Okay. This has been on my arm since 2016. Okay. Now, Bilal also was known to be the man that was in paradise. The prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, heard the scuffles of Bilal's sandals. Bilal is in paradise. The real al Mahdi descended from heaven. Okay? He was the Bilal on top of the Kaaba praying to Allah with no partners before there ever was a world. And your scholars are lost in the sauce. And they don't have any clue because they don't understand types and shadows. This black man by the name of Bilal is the picture of al Mahdi. He's a picture of the only real prophet. Now, I brought this out and it might went over your head. And we'll get back to this later. But in Islam, there's only one God, ultimate God, and there's only one ultimate prophet. Now, are there other gods? Yes. Are there other prophets? Yes. But there's only one ultimate God, and that is Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's only one ultimate prophet, and it's al Mahdi. He is the real Muhammad. The black Mohammed. So here we have Bilal. A picture of the Mahdi. This man had such an electrifying voice that it woke the people up to pray. Okay? The religion of Islam started off with that electrifying voice like Malcolm X. And it will end with that same voice. The problem we have with the Arabians right now is that they're trying to keep something that does not belong to them. al Mahdi is here. He is supposed to be your ruler right now. And this is why you're being stung by a swarm of killer bees. See, bees. Three bees in Abin. Raba. Okay, his name. You got three bees in Bilal, Abin, Raba. So here we have the, the nation of Ishmael right now 
being stung by a swarm of killer bees. Right now, we have 42,000 Palestinians that's documented, killed. Okay? They're being stung by a swarm of killer bees right now for ignoring their black Maddie. Okay? Nobody else will tell you that. Okay? But right here in the house of David, we have the truth. Because the house of David is home of Al Maddy. We have the knowledge. The Bible says the knowledge of the Lord is going to cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. And let me tell you something. We are on to something in the house of David. So this man was known for the paladates. This man was known for being in paradise. This man was known for praying on top of the Kaaba. This is a picture of al -Madi. And Allah is my God. He's my God. Okay? He is my God. Now, in the nation of Israel, we have sayings such as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. I thought he was everybody's God. No. You were getting to know their God through them. And it's the same way right here in Islam. Allah is my God. And you are getting to know Allah through me. This is why the voice, al Mahdi spoke through the prophet Isa. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, was Jesus the way? No. It was the voice. It was the father speaking through the prophet Isa. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Allah is my God and my God only. I am the real Muhammad. I am the Father. I am the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible and the God of the Quran is two different gods. The God of the Bible is Lord of planet Earth. The God of the Quran is Lord over all the worlds. And al Mahdi is in charge of the Earth. Allah has no son. But al Mahdi does. All of the prophets are his sons. Such as Moses is my son. Such as Daniel is my son. Such as the prophet Isa is my son. Such as your prophet Muhammad, he's my son. That's why in the Quran it says, you are not the father to any of your men. You're not al Mahdi, Muhammad. You're a servant. Your job is to keep my people from Christianity. This religion does not belong to you. It's going to the ruler of the Arabs in the future. The man Allah lengthened the day for. So that he could clean this earth. I am the cleanup man. Okay. Now this is the judgment. This is the judgment on the Christian church. Because y'all been over exalting my son y'all been exalting jesus above that which he is worthy and so now the father is here who deserves all of the glory that you put upon the prophet isa it's coming back to me this is the judgment the way i'm talking because you made a god out of the prophet isa and it was my voice speaking through the prophet Isa the whole time. When he said anything that was of the truth, it was my voice speaking through him. al Mahdi. And this is the judgment. Many people don't know what this is. They think this is just some young black man being arrogant. No, this is the judgment. This is what you get. For putting a son above the father. Allah has no sons. My God has no sons. And he told you if you keep saying that. He said that the heavens will quake and the mountains will fall. And I am here. I am Lamonti. I am the mountain. And I am here to do judgment. Allah is using me to judge this whole earth. 
every last one of you will be judged by me. Everyone who touches me in sincerity will be forgiven. And it will be known on that day. Okay, this is my planet. This is my earth. Going on, we have Bilal, who is a picture of Almaty. Now, I know some of y'all might be wondering, how does he know all of this? It's by revelation. All the stuff I'm bringing out is not necessarily in your hadiths, but it agrees with your hadiths. It agrees with the Quran. The Quran is not complete. It's not. It's not complete until the lawman comes. The real Bilal. The real Bilal is the man with the Bible. The real Bilal knows the Bible. I know the Bible. I'm the God of the Bible. I am the chief prophet of Allah. In the throne room of heaven, once upon a time, it was only Allah and it was only his messenger. Now we're going to read something in the book of Numbers. So you can understand this. This is going to be numbers 12 and 1. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, have the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Have he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam. Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out and the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so. Who is, look, y'all, faithful in all my house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. There's only one prophet whom Allah deals with directly. And it is the ultimate Moses. It is the ultimate Muhammad. It is al Mahdi. That's why you in the dark. When you're trying to interpret Isaiah, when you're trying to interpret the parables of Isa, you are in the dark. Because there's only one prophet whom Allah spoke directly with. And it's not the Moses of the Bible. It is the Moses of heaven. It is the al -Mahdi. It is the father. It is the alpha and omega of the prophets. It is the root and the offspring of David. It is the father of the prophet Isa. And that's where you guys fail. You fail to realize that there's only one God, ultimately, and that is Allah. And I worship him with no partners. There's no deity worthy of worship. I'm a deity. You a deity. We are all deities. But there's no deity worthy of worship but Allah. And there's only one Uno. Do you know what Uno means? Do you understand Uno? There's only one prophet who is the ultimate prophet, who is the ultimate Moses. Now, am I saying there's no other prophets? No. Am I saying there's no other gods? No. There are other gods and there are other prophets, but there's only one God ultimately. And he is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's only one prophet ultimately. And it is al Mahdi, and I am here. Now, this is also seen in the story when God made Moses a God. Here we have, in a monotheistic religion, God makes a God out of a man. Then he makes a prophet and tells Moses, this is your mouth. He's your prophet. You are his God. 
You are a God to Pharaoh. Moses was a God to the nation of Israel. That's exactly who he was. He was a picture of Al Mahdi. Because in the throne room of heaven, there's only one messenger. There's only one prophet. Now, let's deal with some confusion we have in these Israelite camps. Now, these Israelite camps fail to interpret the Bible. And they really think that they are supposed to use some false chart and gather all the tribes of Israel. They fail to interpret Isaiah 49 and 6. It's telling you, is it a like thing that you should raise up the tribes of Israel? This man in Isaiah 49 and 6 is going to beget the 12 tribes of Israel. From his loins. That's what that's going into. It's going back to Genesis 49 and 10. Where it says the scepter shall not depart from Judah. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So this man by his loins is going to give life to the tribes of Israel. The tribes of Israel is going to be done all over again fresh. Coming from one man's loins. Coming from one man. Remember God told Moses, he said, look, let me kill them all and I will make of you a great nation. That's exactly what God is doing with al -Madi. So you Israelite camps are lost. God is finna make the tribes of Israel all over again with one man. One man is going to do this. That's why God said, I will raise up for you a prophet. This man is going to be born. That's why God said, I will lengthen the day and I will raise up a man whom I would use to clean up this earth. Paraphrasing. This man is going to be a human being on earth. And it's the same thing with the tribes of Israel. The tribes of Israel is going to be done all over again, coming from one man's loins. And I'm that man. Okay, now let's get that in Isaiah 49 and 6. Now you need to write this down, especially if you are in these Israelite camps. They have no clue in what raising up the tribes of Israel is all going into. So this is going to be Isaiah 49 and 6. And he said, let's start off at 5. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant. To bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered. Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord. And my God shall be my strength. So Israel is not going to be gathered. Israel is going to come from a womb. Okay. It's going to come from some women's wombs. Verse 6. And he said it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant. To raise up the tribes of Jacob. So God is going to use one man. One man to restart the tribes of Israel. All over again. Just like what he did with the first Jacob. He's doing it with the second Jacob. He's doing it with al Madi. See, al Madi is going into the Dai. You see Dai, D-I on his name. That's going into the ink. There's one man who has the Dai. To give all of the tribes of Israel a fresh start all over. Coming from this man's loins. I am Daquant. Okay, I'm the man that has the dye. I have the dye in my loins. Okay, to restart the tribes of Israel all over again. This is what al Mahdi has been called to do. That's why I am the luckiest man on the planet. I get to redo the tribes of Israel. All over. That's what Isaiah 49 and 6 is talking about. It's talking about raising up the tribes of Israel all over again. Coming from one man and coming from a woman's womb. Okay. And this is the truth. That's what you in the dark about. If you are in these Israelite camps, they have no understanding. Okay, God bless my brothers. I love my brothers. They trying to come together. Okay, they trying to unify all praises for that. But we still need knowledge. The tribes of Israel has to be restarted. 
God has another Jacob down here to redo this thing. I'm telling you, man, I'm about to have some fun. I'm about to have some fun, man. It is a blessed thing to be me and I'm not rubbing it in your face, but I'm giving God all of the glory and I'm humble with it and I'm excited with it. Okay, so let's do a recap on what we've been talking about. Here we have Bilal. Bilal was a picture of Al Mahdi, the man who was praying on top of the Kaaba. Islam started from a black man. A man who was the God of the Bible. When the Bible is speaking, it's Al Mahdi speaking. Okay? It's Al Mahdi. Al Mahdi is the God of the Bible. Al Mahdi had to strip himself. Of the deity. You see, I can go into Paul's letters and I can pick up Goliath's sword. It is written, David went and he picked up Goliath's sword. This uncircumcised Philistine's sword that's going into his book. And the Lord has opened up my eyes to the point that I can go into Paul's letters and I can bring the truth out of it. Okay, I got Goliath's sword on you right now, boy. I pulled out Goliath's sword. All those scriptures that's going towards Jesus is going towards Al Mahdi. Al Mahdi was in heaven this whole time and he stripped himself from being a deity. He came down here to be a man. He's being rejected right now. He's being refused right now. He is suffering all manner of evil. He's learning obedience through the things he suffered. This is the ultimate servant of Isaiah 53. There's no beauty we should desire of him. Who has believed our report? Everybody has believed Jesus' report. Who have believed our report? Nobody has believed our report yet. Nobody has believed the report of Isaiah 53 yet here in the house of David. Okay. Isaiah was talking about the stone that the builders rejected. And that stone is Al Mahdi. Now we gonna take names. We writing down names. We holding people accountable. Okay. This right here is the father of the prophet Isa. This is the father of the prophet Muhammad. This is the father of of the prophet Moses. Peace and blessings be upon them all. Okay. So this man is faithful in all of his house. Okay. Now when you go into the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews is talking about Al Mahdi. Al Mahdi is the one who is faithful in all of Allah's house. He is the chief messenger. He comes down here at the end. God saves the best for last, bro. He saves the best for last. And God is allowing me to redo the tribes of Israel. So all the names you see in the book of Revelation going into the gates, all those tribes is coming from one man all over again. Okay. And then we going into the judgment. As it is written, God will bring forth a black stone. This stone will have two eyes and a tongue. And whoever touches it in sincerity, Allah will have mercy on them. And those who don't and won't will be judged. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.